Tyrone Guang is here. Yes, we're talking about Yan Fei today. We're going to be going over everything you need to know about this character from weapons to artifacts to teammates to how to play the character a little bit and top of that. So let's get right into it for you guys here. First of all, Yan Fei obviously is a charge attack focused character, but she's not entirely just charge attacks. So the way that she works is you want to use a little bit of normal attacks and then use some charge attacks. This is because multifaceted thing here. You're not going to have infinite stamina to always use your charge attacks. Your charge attacks cost stamina, but she has this new unique thing. When she does her normal attack, she will start getting these big buffs, these scarlet seals, and these are going to increase the damage of your charge attack. But on top of that, it's not just going to increase the damage. It's going to reduce the amount that your charge attack costs. So normally it costs 50 energy. It goes down by 15% per seal you have. You can have up to three seals. So especially we'll talk about this with team compositions later on with like Xing Cho, you're going to really want to go ahead and use your normal attacks and your charge attacks to continuously vaporize him over and over and over and over and over. Well, not vaporize Xing Cho, we're trying to vaporize the enemy, but you guys know what we're talking about there. What if you could, sh Never mind. Never mind. Anyway, outside of that, the duration on the seals is 10 seconds. There's another way to get seals though. You don't always need to go to three, right? You normal attack, normal attack, charge. You want to get as many charge attacks off as possible without running out of energy there. So we'll talk about that as well. Also, you have an LML skill here, signed edict. Note the nine second cooldown does damage, has a nine second cooldown and it instantly gives you three stacks or the max stacks, I guess, because she does have a constellation where you have one extra stack. Okay, and then we have done deal here, which does do damage a small amount. You can see that the elemental skill almost as much as your burst damage does but it's going to also start granting you seals over time. Every one second, you'll get a seal. So what you can do with this is you can pop this, use an auto attack, a normal attack, and then go into your charge attack. And you'll have two seals, which is very good because it's going to cost less stamina. Your charge attacks are going to have an extra little stack on them. So you're going to have one little bit of bonus damage, as you can see here. And then on top of that, it's also going to give you 49% bonus charge attack damage, which is very, 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 very powerful and also is going to make one of the sets that we'll talk about that everyone's super hyped up for a little bit worse than what you thought it would be. Now, then we have her ascensions here. The first one, boom, when you consume the seals by using a charge attack, right? One, two or three, or even four seals with the constellation, her pyro damage bonus is gonna go up as well by 5%. This lasts for six seconds. And when a charge attack is used again during the effects duration, it will dispel it. So it's not gonna extend it. It'll just like rewrite it, right? Just rewrite it, rewrite like the Full Metal Alchemist song. You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so you have like six seconds of 5% pyro damage. Not the craziest thing ever, but it is going to be per seal. So if you have three sacks, 15%. And then you do it again with three sacks, 15%. Then you do it again, 15%. So, and if you have the Constellation, you have 20%. I understand that. Now, Blazing Eye here, when her charge attack deals crits, she will deal an additional instance of AoE pyro damage equal to 80% of her attack. This damage counts as charge attack damage. And this one is a big one right? Because you guys know about Crescent Pike and the Scoured Pride and how those are like separate instances of like damage procs. This is that too. So this is what really kind of makes that character that extra good because it's not 80% additional bonus damage to her, her charge attack. That's not what it does. It kind of attacks with a secondary charge attack that counts as a charge attack. It has a much lower mod, right? When you charge attack, okay, 145%. If you buff that up by like 80% of this and then buff that up by like charge attack damage increase from like the Wanderer set or her uh, signed edict or done deal or her pyro damage bonus on her set. That is way less strong than getting a secondary attack here that counts as a charge attack attack because these are also gonna get those charge attack multipliers as well. So very powerful. It's also AOE pyro damage. So not only does it get charge attack mods, it also gets pyro damage mods. So if you're wearing the witch set, you get max stacks because guess what? Nine second cooldown, very strong. You guys can kind of see what's going on here. Now with this character, she is the Pyro Ningguang because she is so charge attack focused. Constellations real quick here. C1 here, um, this one right here, you know, C1, uh, when you use your charge attack, each skull that seal reduces the stamina cost of this charge attack by 10%, uh, which is pretty good. And also a minor thing here, you'll notice that when you play her, increases resistance against interruption during its release. It's actually pretty powerful because her charge attack takes a little bit of time to get going there and you're gonna notice yourself getting hit out of it a lot of the time. So if you're not playing her with like Zhong Li, who's on the banner, you shield her up. Good combo. If you have a big shield on her though, that's gonna help you out a ton there. Outside of that, it really just helps you with that charge attack reduction cost, right? This could be up to 20, 30, 40% reduction on that charge attack cost, which is very nice. 
Now this one here, charge hit crit rate 20% against enemies below 50% HP. This one I think is very good as well. Free crit chance is nothing to be scoffed at. There's a reason why the Blizzard Strayer set is so powerful because it's free crit chance. Now, this is an always free crit chance, but even sub 50% HP, you win them end game areas with the Abyss monsters that have huge HP bars. Half that fight, you're gonna be critting more often. You have crit damage up, be good to go there. This is a very powerful constellation here for you guys as well. This one here upgrades your signed edict. It's okay. Now remember signed edict though, right? Some characters have their burst first. Some characters have their skill first. Signed edict is her skill. You don't really care about that getting upgraded all that much. Now Supreme Amnesty here talking about shields. She will self shield herself, but it's based off of her max HP. This one I do not like at all. I think this is a pretty bad constellation. It gives you 45% of our max HP for 15 seconds. So on average, what is going to be? It's going to be like a 6K HP shield. It's okay. It's going to help you get those charge attacks off, but uh, and it's going to start absorbing damage. Uh, I play every team composition with a shield, so I might be a little bit biased there, right? I have like some sort of Geo Shield character or, or, or Diona or something in any one of my given parties. So me having another shield when shields don't stack don't matter that much. But if you're, you know, running around and you have like a, you know, a 12K HP, uh, Yanfei, you know, you're going to get like a, you know, like a 5.5 K, 6 K HP shield. That's okay. And then extra claws here. This one is, I think probably the most overhyped of her constellations. I don't think you even want to go down this far. I think uh, C2 by far is her best one. And like maybe C1 because you can charge attack ad infinitum, uh, forever. Uh, this one here just gives you one more Scarlet Seal. So how impactful is a Scarlet Seal? All you guys need to do, go look at her, her charge attack bonus damage right base is 145 one seals 170 two seals is 196 three seals is 221 and then the max seals 247 at a level eight normal attack you're literally only gaining 26 percent of a mod for getting her to constellation six you have c6 you get one extra stack which is the 10 percent plus the, the natively 25 percent so you have 100 percent reduction in charge attack cost that's great that also means that your normal attack, normal attack, normal attack, normal attack, charge attack, which is not what you want to do. You're going to be normal attack, normal attack, charge attack, normal attack, charge attack, normal, normal, normal charge, normal, normal charge, normal charge. You're never really going to hit four stacks unless you are using uh, your elemental skill there. Sign Edict is going to give you that four stacks there. So hopefully that guys made sense to you. Now let's go in here and show you exactly how this character works a little bit. Now Yanfei does have two different animation cancels and they're very important actually because she's all about getting those quick normal attacks off and into those charge attacks. So the normal tech animation cancel works very similarly to Klee's, which is as soon as you see her book disappear there, you are free to go right on ahead again and use that basic attack once again. So normal attack looks something like this. Animation cancel looks something like uh, this right here. Boom, boom, boom. And if you get really good at it, you can be a little bit faster than that. And that is better than this one. And doing the cancel into the charge is not that hard. You hold basically your attack button as you start doing uh, whatever attack you're trying to cancel. So if I wanted to cancel the first attack, I just, I will click this and then hold it. Easy mode, right? If I want to cancel the second one, I click, click, hold, good to go. And that's what's going to happen here. So let's go ahead and let's just pop this. And I think she's going to get absolutely wrecked <laughs> by these enemies unless I guard against them, right? Because she's a catalyst character and she's kind of a squishy catalyst character. So we have that and then we can go here and we gonna pop this. Oh, a little bit of jump animation cancel. You can jump animation cancel. That's fine. Right? You notice that we're kind of out. Pop a three. Go again. And she's she's a powerful character. She's very she's. She's Pyro Ningguang is what she is. So what about artifact sets? What kind of sets should you be looking for here? We look at this character. There's going to be a couple artifact sets that are really going to be the number one. Now, if you're running a Vaporize team, you're running a Freeze team with her, Vaporize is going to do more damage over time, especially if you're running with Xing Cho, right? And there's a certain distance behind that. And I wish I could show you this, guys, but I'm literally like three pulls from Eula. So we're going to have to deal with this um, sort of stuff. We math all this stuff out though behind the scenes. It's good. It's good fun, but I'd show it. But every time I show it, you know what my YouTube analytics, the hard data says, you guys go, ooh, you just leave as soon as a graph shows up. It's crazy for 15 seconds. I'm not sure why. But anyway, what happens here with Xing Cho is if you're a certain distance away, you'll start shooting your normal attack fireball, but the swords will come up and then beat it to the enemy and the enemy will get hydroed first and then you'll hit them with your normal attack and vaporize them but 
the attack will still be there. And then you start up your second attack that we talked about before, right? The one, two combo. And what you'll do is you'll animation cancel that second attack into your charge and you'll proc the swords again and then you'll you'll vaporize everything and it's it's great and then the enemy will have nothing on it but then you'll start it up again and your swords will come after your normal attack and beat it to the enemy and you'll start doing the whole chain over again and that means that the best set for her bar for none is going to be the crimson witch of flame set which they properly gave the character this now let's explain why this set is so good for you guys real quick two piece set power damage bonus 15 percent sweet everything she does is power damage her normal attack her charge attack her elemental skill elemental burst all pyro awesome awesome very strong stuff but the four piece set here and this is especially important the reason why this is so good is if you're running that freeze team or that vaporize team with Xing Cho, increases vaporize and melt damage by 15 percent, and that is a lot better than what you guys probably realize out there because this is the equivalent of like a, a good bit of elemental mastery out there to increase by 15 percent because if you take a look at this character's elemental mastery right she has 105 and that increases it by 19 percent. so this is going to be worth about the same amount of elemental mastery as our good friend the wanderers set which we'll talk about real shortly very very strong very good set as well but we also have access to not only that two-piece bonus there but every time you use your elemental skill it increases the effect of the two-piece bonus by 50 percent of its starting value for 10 seconds so every single time you use your elemental skill which has a nine second cooldown you will get a 7.5 percent pyro damage buff for 10 seconds well okay this also stacks up to three stacks so what this means is that she's a very active character you want to run in the field for a very long time uh for the most part here you'll be able to get two sometimes maybe three stacks here but probably two right because you're going to elemental skill you're going to do your stuff for nine seconds you're going to elemental skill again you're going to do your stuff for nine seconds and then maybe you'll elemental skill again and, and drop your church check and then swap out because you're going to need to rebuff up with your shing cho so traditionally two stacks of this but if you use a certain weapon we'll talk about it's going to be it's going to be three stacks but this is very good because you'll get an extra 15 percent to up to 22.5 percent additional power damage bringing the two-piece bonus all the way to a 37.5 percent bonus to everything the normal attack you're in the boss with your charge attacks your elemental skill and your elemental burst buffs everything by 37.5 percent and then increases your vaporize and melt damage by the equivalent of like around 80 elemental mastery there but what other set sounds very similar to this well of course it's the wanderer set so what about the wanderer set is it her best set a lot of people are saying it's her best set i will disagree with that i will say it's a good set for her though even if you are running a vaporizer or melt team because it does give you the two piece 80 elemental mastery the four piece here is charge attack damage 35 percent right that is also very powerful but the thing here is it's only charge attack damage so it's not doing if especially if you're running here with xing cho your normal attacks don't make up the large majority of your damage but they're still there they're still there you're still buffing that up the lml skill isn't the large majority of damage but it's still there i'm going to burst isn't the large majority of your damage it's still there in the same proper setup this set will do slightly less damage what you need to really look at is what kind of roles you have on your sets so it's going to come back down to some basic genshin impact stuff if you have something that looks like this on like every wanderer's troop you leveled up to 20 and it's a banger because let's talk about stats real quick crit chance crit damage attack percent easy sold done and that's what you need for your subsets there so flower feather crit chance up to 50 55 percent general rule of thumb if you keep the two to one ratio so for every you know two crit damage you have one crit rate so you have 50 percent crit chance 100 crit damage that's the golden ratio try to hit 50 crit chance 100 crit damage and then after that if you can have 60 crit chance 120 crit damage mathematically that's the best although how efficient it is for you to do that and how feasible it is for you to always have two to one as you increase your gear strength it becomes increasingly difficult to do that because are you gonna build 80 percent crit chance 160 crit damage that is way off the line so what you're gonna hit is a cap at some point and you're just gonna have to pick between one of the two and i like the once i hit 60 percent crit rate we go for some crit damage. We have 60% crit rate, 180 crit damage, 200 crit damage. Very good there. But general rule of thumb, two to one ratio up to 50% crit chance of 100 crit damage. At least get that 50% crit chance. And that is going to tell you what sort of circlet that you need. So say you have, you know, your flower, your feather, your sands, and your goblet ready to go, and you have 20% crit rate. So what kind of circlet do you need to wear? 
You need to wear a crit chance circlet. This is what you need to wear because this is going to be that last 30% to hit that 50% bare minimum. You don't have that 50% bare minimum. You are murdering your DPS. I don't care if you have 290 crit damage. You have 10 crit rate. It doesn't matter. Now, if you have your flower feather, uh, sands in goblet ready to go and you have 55 crit rate on there, slap that big crit damage circle and I maybe get like 10 more crit chance if you're lucky on your circlet, but make it a crit damage circlet because you already have that 50% crit chance because you got, apparently got all these big boss crit chance rolls in your subsets for the other ones and slap on that crit damage circlet. For your goblet, obviously you're wearing a pyro goblet, nothing to do there. And then your sands and main stat sands. So the subsets you're looking for across all of your artifacts, right? If you can roll them crit chance up to 50%, 55% in total, maybe good to 60 crit damage and then attack percent. Those are your three best things to roll for subsets and main sets for Yan Fei. But what about the big bad boss weapons? What are we looking for here? Obviously there's going to be a couple of good ones here. Now the memory of dust, let's go over the five stars really quickly. It's going to take two seconds. Memory of dust, you have her C4. She's your only shielder. You want the extra shield strength. Good to go there. She's going to get those stacks up. You're going to have a lot of attack percent there. You're going to do a lot of stuff with memory of dust, which is going to be on the banner. So, you know, maybe if you're pulling out the banner, maybe you get lucky. Uh, if you want some more attack there, Skyward Atlas summons a little, the little uh, Navy of the Fairy, flies around, a lot of base attack, a lot of attack percent, and that little bonus damage adds up over time, but it's nothing super insane. And if you need that crit chance out there, by far the best weapon is going to be the Lost Prayers of the Sacred Winds. Gives you element damage bonus up, has a ton of crit chance on it. It's going to be her best weapon because she likes to be on the field for extended periods of time. You're going to get those max stacks up and it's going to be good for you there but what about four star weapons so basic four star weapons to talk about here i have perception it's like the four star version of the skyward atlas right good base attack attack percent as its secondary stat summons another little floating navy of the fairy to pepper your opponents down with damage so another very good solid weapon solar pearl here right solar pearl is very strong it has crit chance on it it's basically like a four star mini version of the lost prayers of the sacred wind the only bad part about solar pearl is it buffs your normal attack, your elemental skill, and your elemental burst damage, but it does not buff your charge attack damage whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. Now, those books are very good for her, but the best two four-star books, in my opinion, in the stats show it for you guys here for either burst damage or consistency is going to be a very strong one here, Sacrificial Fragments. If you're running, right, that Vaporized Xing Cho squad, Sacrificial Fragments is going to be insanely good for you because of two things. It's got Elemental Mastery as a secondary stat, usually frowned down on, but when you're vaporizing all of your attacks and all of it matters, very strong stat. And then on top of that, it has the effect of Compose. So when you use your Elemental Skill, it has a up to 80% chance at Refinement Rank 5 on this Force or Weapon to reset the cooldown, which is very, very, very good. It can only occur once every 22 seconds, but not only do you get to do the reset the cooldown to do the damage again, what you do get to do is use your Elemental Skill get max seals, charge attack, use your elemental skill again, cause it reset, charge attack again with back to back max stacks. Very, very, very good stuff in there. Throw in like an auto attack in there to make your Shing Show throw the swords out, vaporize, vaporize, good to go there, very strong stuff. But on top of that, not only does it reset it and allow you to do back to back charge attacks or charge attacks in quick succession, it resets the cooldown in your E. So what does that mean? You're using the witch's set and now it's very feasible for you to hit three stacks of the Witch's set and get the full effect bonus. Get that full 37.5% pyro damage affecting those normal attacks, those charge attacks, the elemental skill, the elemental burst. Very good stuff there. Now, if you're looking for a quick, big burst of damage, look no further than the Witch's set. The Witch's set here has pretty good base attack and gives you crit damage up. So you want to hit big crit damage, right? Get that 50%, 55, 60% crit rate, 200% crit damage. Very strong book for you there. And then at Refinement Rank 1, it's also very good because the ability here, and if you get to Refinement Rank 5, it's a little banana. So what this does do is when your character takes the field, so when Yanfei is active, you swap her from the back to the front, she will get one of these three random buffs for 10 seconds. At Refinement Rank 1, she's either going to get 60% attack, 48% element damage, or 240 element masteries. Now, if you're running her in an element mastery using team, so you have her in a freeze team or a vaporize team, all three of these buffs are insane for you, right? They all increase your damage, some more than others, but they're all a big damage increase. Now it is only for 10 seconds and has a 30 second cooldown, 
but it's going to allow you to absolutely obliterate things, right? Imagine having a 200 and something crit chance or crit damage, a Yan Fei build with 50 something crit rate, and you swap in and you get these insane buffs. If you have a refinement ranks, it gets insane. 120% attack, 96% element damage, or 480 element mastery. You will actually destroy things like no one's ever destroyed something before with a four-star character. Now, this was also pretty good with Ningguang, but it was a little bit worse with Ningguang because she didn't really have a use for the element mastery. Yanfei does because she's a pyro Ningguang and it's going to be very, very, very good for her. Pair this with the Lava Walker set in that Xing Chou build or a freeze team of some nature. Yeah, you can kind of smell what the rock is cooking and the rock is cooking some lawyer butt kicking, if you know what I'm saying. But honestly, she's going to be a very strong character there for you guys here. If you guys want to see more math and statistics, let me know down in the comment section because the data that I've arrived at so far, you guys aren't all that interested in it. I do it behind the scenes and I report on it. And I know that leaves you a little bit suspicious because it's just I'm saying it. But the statistics show that when I show it, even for a brief second, everyone vamooses and leaves. So that's what we're going to have to deal with right now. If you guys want to see more Genshin Impact content, fun a little bit uh a little bit factual there unlike yeah some other unscrupulous sources there but we want to keep it fun we want to give you guys the information to utilize the characters that you need and want to use the most in the best way possible check us out here usually we do have actual gameplay footage of the character to show off but like i said i'm like four pulls from eula so we're kind of saving that pity if you know what i mean i'll catch you guys in the next one